Hello, good morning. Welcome to another time of KHC Video Devotional for 3rd of September. The topic we are looking at this morning is their pastor. How can I get wiser and smarter to discern wrong relationship? As I counsel Shadi, well, not the real name, I felt godly compassion for her. She narrated our deals in relationships and how she suffered emotionally from guys one after the other in several failed relationships. Shadi is born again, spirit-filled, and loves God. She is a passionate worker in a church, but she just couldn't get a relationship right. Proverbs 2, 10 to 20, when wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things, who leave parts of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths to deliver them from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with our words, which forsake the guide of our youth and forget the covenant of our God. For our house inclined on the death and our parts on the dead, none that go unto our return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. But thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. Does God ever lead his children? Is there something one can do to avoid getting into the hands of wrong people? Why does it seem so difficult to decide for God's direction where relationships are concerned? Well, the first thing I would like you to know is that there are wrong people. If there are no wrong people, the scriptures will not talk about the evil men and strange women. If there are no wrong people, there will not be a neighbor who is a definition of a kid's foolishness, yet got married to a wise woman. If there are no wrong people, there will not be a Delilah whose assignment was to eliminate something by tampering with his anointing. The second thing is that God has a way out for us, only if we can follow him. He is very much interested and particular about our relationships and marriages, that if we allow him, he will lead us. The third thing is that you can avoid getting the wrong relationships, being jilted, unnecessary aches and untold emotional agonies. The fourth thing is how. How is this possible? What am I supposed to do? Let's look at the God's word. Proverbs 2, 10 to 17, when wisdom enters into the heart, knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Look at the emphasis of those words. Discretion will preserve, understanding will keep, to deliver from evil man. Look at verse 13. It says, verse 16 rather, to deliver from the strange woman. Verse 11 says you can be preserved and kept. Message translation says good sense will scout ahead for danger. Insight will keep an eye out for you. Verse 12 says you will be delivered from the evil man. And the final version says to deliver you from the way of the evil and the evil men, from men who speak perverse things and are lies. Verse 16 says, you will be delivered from the strange woman. NIV says, it will save you from the adulteries, from the wayward wife with her seductive words. Now we can see that direction is very possible. But then how will this happen? You mean God can actually guide my relationships? The answer is yes. How? Well, it is right there in verse 10. It says, wisdom must enter your heart. That is the first thing. How does wisdom enter your heart? The word wisdom in Hebrew means to pound in knowledge. So when you keep pounding in knowledge of God's word into your spirit, it will become wisdom for you at the end of the day. Number two, knowledge must be pleasant to your soul. What's your best food? What's that food that once you perceive it, it's aroma you cannot resist? Just as that food is, a ple is pleasant to you, God's word must be pleasant to your soul. Look forward to studying God's word. It will preserve and keep you from entering into wrong relationships. You will be shielded from unnecessary attics and agony. Go for wisdom. Go for God's word. The next time someone comes asking you out, you will know deep down in your heart whether it's the right person or not. God's word is that powerful. You will know whether it's just looking for sex. You will know whether she, wants, she just wants to have your money. Before you ever propose, you will know whether she's the right one or it is just a waste of time, energy, and resources. By God's grace, direction, and help, 
My wife was the first and the last person I proposed to. I had no experimental relationship. I wrote that not a boast, but to encourage you that it's possible God's word can lead you to. Only if you can diligently go for knowledge and wisdom from God's word. If you have had a lot of experiments and something around the sexual involvement, God can still make all things new if you embrace him now. If you're not born again or you want to rededicate your life, call me now and I will, I will gladly pray with you. If you're already married and you feel it's the wrong choice, you can only do one thing, call on God. It will turn the situation around. Don't give up quickly. Divorce is not really what God wants. So we see the key to wisdom here. Read and study God's word daily. Do not leave your room or house until you have eaten from the master. Do not leave your, your home until life, that is Zoe, has been injected into your spirit and your head anointed with fresh oil in his presence as you meditatively look at his word. That is where you get the wisdom to avoid wrong relationships, discern wrong partners in business, and avoid them and be kept away from unnecessary loss in your life. I pray that God will open your eyes. He will speak to you expressly as you study his word to know which wrong relationship you are already involved with. That we not only sap your energy, but has potential of jeopardizing your relationship with God. And it will give you strength to disconnect from such relationships in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation for the day. And here's why. God gives us wisdom free, his plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2 says message translation. Prayer for the day. Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Number two, cause me to experience your wisdom, O Lord. Number three, O Lord, deliver me from every ancestral brain blockage. In the name of Jesus. Confession for the day. I am wiser. I'm smarter. I design wrong relationships. I am spirit-filled and my spirit mind is alive and sensitive. I will go after wisdom. God's word is life and light to me. I enjoy reading God's word. By your help, I disconnect from all wrong friends. By your spirit, I'm energized to live right. I know and I do what is right in the name of Jesus. I'm delivered from every yoke of folly. I am set free from long ascension chains in the name of Jesus. Action plan for the day. Have a study guide to read God's word daily. Number two, follow it religiously. Chronological Bible reading for today, 1 Chronicles chapter 8, Daniel chapter 4, 1 to 37, Ezekiel 31 to 37. Thank you for listening this morning. We'd like you to partner with us on Kisses and Ox Club. Kindly go to the URL www.kissesandox.com slash give and you will find several options on how to give. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.